With the recent WannaCry ransomware attacks, I thought it would be appropriate to reach out to Acronis, which is the maker of the very popular True Image software, which is, if you don't know, it's a backup software suite that allows you to completely back up your computer and if need be, completely restore it then if something catastrophic like, well, you know, ransomware happens to you. So regardless, I reached out to Acronis for a review copy of their True Image software. They were uh, happy to provide one and today we are looking at the review of the 20 2017 version of True Image. So Acronis provided me with a premium license which comes with one terabyte of cloud storage and also gives you the option to do some things that I wasn't so interested in like syncing folders between multiple computers but it is required that you have cloud storage to do that with the license whereas the one-time license which is also an option, gives you access to just True Image 2017, not future versions, but it is a one-time payment of, I believe, $49.99, whereas a one-year subscription to the basic version, which gives you 50 gigabytes of uh, cloud storage, is $39.99, but that is an annual fee, and of course, the premium is $99.99. With that in mind, my angle for the review then focuses on the one-time payment version of the True Image software and whether it's worth your money, your roughly uh, $50 of payment to actually acquire the software and whether it will be put to good use with those local only options, uh, ignoring the cloud storage options altogether. That being said, if you are interested in the cloud options and what that brings to the table, I will tell you this. The syncing from computer to computer works very well and also the computer to cloud storage works very well. And if that is something you're interested in, it's like sort of a souped up uh, Dropbox or Google Chrome where you can designate each individual folder on your computer to automatically sync up. Now, the user interface of Acronis is extremely user friendly whether it be hopping from tool to tool or just hopping into the backup option, which is what most people will be wanting to do anyways. It's very easy to just click on the source of whatever backup you're making, in my case, the C drive of my main computer, and then clicking the network attached storage, which is just located under the network. You open that up, give it a minute to recognize what other devices are on your network and log in if applicable to your network attached storage and then just pick a folder in there to save your backups too. I have mine set up to backup every week and every Sunday it does just that, keeping a one week old copy of my operating system and all of my files exactly as they exist on my computer is extremely useful. If a ransomware attack or a piece of ransomware happened to find itself on my computer, the most I would have to go back would be one full week, and that's only if it happened at the end of the week, obviously. So it gives me great peace of mind knowing that my computer is fully backed up, and if ransomware happens to find itself on my computer, all I have to do is refresh back to the one week old version of everything, and I'm back good to go. If, however, you are somebody that has one main computer and you're planning on storing your local backup on something like an external hard drive, then one of the first things you should do is make your media rescue device, whether it be a USB stick or a DVD that just happens to be bootable or a CD that's bootable, whatever the case may be, go ahead and make that media and just tuck it away somewhere where you will remember it. So if you ever do need to restore your computer from an unusable state back to a state that it is usable, you have that on hand and it's available. Another good option for those of you that may be upgrading soon is the universal installer that is offered by Acronis. So the way the universal installer works is you restore your backup to the computer that you would like to be using. And if it is dissimilar hardware and the drivers aren't playing nice or whatever the case may be, you can use the universal installer to essentially fix all your drivers for the new hardware. This can fix a lot of those issues that you sort of sometimes run into when you're moving everything over to a new computer, especially if it's a completely different platform, like maybe that Intel to Ryzen platform change you've been thinking about. And it just makes the entire process super simple and in a lot of cases probably a lot faster than just reinstalling everything else from brand new. It's a really good middle ground for not having to reinstall all your programs manually and still getting the compatibility and effectively the reliability that you're looking for with, that you would normally get from a clean install that you might not expect from a sort of a dirty swap. 
One of my only complaints about Acronis was that while selecting source or destination folders, sometimes, especially when working with my network attached storage, it wouldn't recognize it right away. So if that happens to you, just sort of give it a minute to find all the network devices and get logged in if you have to put in your credentials for that. The other issue came when I was looking at the sync option. I had created a sync on my main machine, and then when I was done with it, I decided to delete that sync from my main machine. It took it several attempts before it actually deleted the sync, even though it was from the machine that I was using. So I had created the, the sync on the same machine and deleted it from the same machine, and it still took it a while to actually remove that from the listing. So my conclusion with Acronis is actually really simple. At a $50 charge for the one-time purchase, it's actually a really good value. It's one of those pieces of software that you put $50 in now and you always have it from now till eternity. And the 2017 version does do pretty much everything that you could possibly want from cloning a drive so you can move it over to a uh, new system. Maybe you're just wanting to clone a hard drive that's on a current system that's just an older hard drive and running a little bit slow to a new hard drive. That would work really well as well. Um, or just moving things over to an SSD, all those things just work spot on because it is doing sector by sector cloning. So everything just works flawlessly. From that perspective, it's great. Using it as a local backup to revert to if you ever have something catastrophic happens is also a great option. And for the one-time fee, I think it's totally worth it. The subscription versions, I'm not so sold on. For $40 a year for the low end of things, and then a huge $100 premium subscription per year, that's a really tough sell for me. Even if you're somebody that may like the option of having cloud storage, another thing you could do is just back up locally and then use something free like Google Drive and move your backup over there. I think that's a lot more cost effective option to use. All that being said, my recommendation is to go ahead if you're looking at options, specifically paid options like this, that give you that peace of mind that you always have a system to revert back to if you need it, then this is a great option. The user interface is extremely simple and it just works. So for that reason, I do recommend the one-time payment of $50 to get yourself this software. It is totally worth it. And again, it's a one-time payment from now to eternity. So guys, if you like this content and want to see more reviews of products, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment down below. All those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And of course, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.